We really are having a showdown. That's exactly what this is. Your sasses and your pointy helmets. Oh dear, don't make fun of the helmets. They could be very self-conscious uh, self about those. Um, I'm sorry. That's exactly what the both of you are doing. You're being way too damn hasty. And may I ask you, do you think it's such a good idea to provoke them? I'm just saying. You see only a few of them here. But you don't know if they'll call reinforcements, fool. Are they seriously bringing out the tanks? They're seriously bringing out the tanks. Are you seriously bringing out tanks? Oh my god. They seriously brought out tanks. The fuck is wrong with you people? No shit! Sorry, as a citizen, if I see you engaging in a, a verbal argument with these guys, and then you bring out freaking armored vehicles into the plaza, no, I am not gonna believe a fucking thing you say, because you're just showing off. Then you know nothing of your people, because seeing someone bring out these things is not exactly, you know, calming. That makes people anxious and fearful, you stupid buffoon! And I suggest you go sp speak to your superiors about why you shouldn't be bringing armored vehicles out in the middle of the fucking plaza in front of civilians when there is no need for it. Oh, you are not kidding. Oh, he is. He's definitely spoiling for a fight. can just like square up in front of civilians in the middle of the plaza is just astounding to me I thought you guys were supposed to protect the people not send them into a frenzy of panic you're quite correct of course both the provincial army and the railway military police have their own roles to fill each important to the Empire well I'll be Hello, Claire. What's essentially happening is that the dudes in the orange coats, the orange heads as I'm gonna call them, they feel threatened that the RMP is in their city because they are territorial. They're just like typical children. They're like, no, this is mine, this is mine. So they're trying to show off to the general populace saying, hey, we have armored guns. We could have this handled. We are more trustworthy than them. And even though the RMP aren't exactly saying that, they are insinuating that they could do better than the noble factions, provincial armies. So it's more or less of, it's really just a power fight of I think I'm better, but you're trash. And neither one of them is taken into consideration. They're having this little squat of theirs in the middle of 
the general populace in front of a bunch of civilians. Civilians who are watching this go down as this moron brings out tanks. Tell me, if you are a normal citizen and you come outside because you think something's going on and you see this orange peel of a bastard bring out freaking tanks, is your first reaction, ah, I feel so safe. Or is it, what the fuck is this moron doing? Fucking clawed! It's a basically who's. It's an argument of who dick is whose dicks is bigger. That's this, that, that's exactly what this is. Okay, see, that's what I mean. They are here on official business to do something, and this jackass brings out freaking armor tanks! Oh yeah, this is the guy I want protecting my home. Ah, yes, classy indeed. She's essentially just saying the same thing, only in fancier words. It's a yes or no answer, moron. It's not a but. A query for you, then. How would you respond if a crisis were to occur in multiple places at the same time? Is that fucking Rufus? What are you doing here? What the fuck is this, a showdown? It just, it just continues to get worse. But he does technically have a point. What happens if you attack multiple pl multiple places all at once? Okay, Rufus, look, I get it. The RMP isn't all it's cracked up to be. I agree. But you know, neither is the provincial army. And may I question you on this, good sir? As somebody whose duty as it is to watch over the citizens of your designated area, do you find it comforting or alarming when you see some jackass summon an armored cart in the middle of the street? No, I can tell you right now, it is by no means comforting because the first damn thought that will go through a person's head is what the hell is happening? Are we under attack? Should I be scared for my life? I need to get my family out of here. They're not thinking about anything else. They don't give a shit who it is. You're causing mass panic by bringing a fucking armored car in the middle of the goddamn street. Use your head. He's a noble, you buffoon. Of course he's gonna dress the part. Ah, Captain Claire Revelt, I presume? It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Rufus, let me tell you something. I don't like you. I've heard much about you. Good for you. It's an honor, Lord Alberea. Please, no need for formalities between us. Rufus is fine. Still, you seem puzzled as to what I'm doing in Ruhr. Frankly, I don't think we care. Or to be more specific, how I got here. Do I assume correctly? 
The country's railways are completely under your control. Had I taken a train, you would have known it. And yet, there are no signs I passed through Ruhr Airport either. The truth is more mundane than fantastic. I arrived aboard the Alborea family's private airship. And then there's that. Which currently sits just off a highway on the outskirts of the city, awaiting my return. I... Blind spots are an unavoidable reality. We all have them. I'm not saying you don't, Rufus. I'm just stating that you have no need to bring a military vehicle out in the public when there is no reason to do so. You're both wrong on this. I do not fucking care who you are, who you represent. I care about the safety of the civilians and whose job it is to conduct as such. And that, I'm sorry to say, is the job of your ridiculous asshole in the orange coat over there. As on the ball as you are, you do well not to overestimate your own superiority. Quite frankly, I could say the same thing about you, Rufus. After really, all, I could. The hardest falls are the ones we don't see coming. I could kill him. I don't like Rufus. I'll be sure to keep that in mind. Now, isn't it time both sides withdrew? I'm sorry, do you see the RMP wielding guns or anything that requires them to withdraw? I see one side with weapons out, but it certainly isn't the RMP. And remove those unsightly vehicles from the streets at once. The only damn thing you've got sense of. A provincial army must conduct itself with valor and grace at all times. Would you not agree? <laughs> I'm afraid some of that is lost on you. Precisely, my lord. Then if that's the case, why did you do it in the first wide jackwad? Oh my god, what a bunch of idiots. This is like watching children fight over a toy. Oh, yes. How fortunate am I to see you in your ugly mug. Good. Now, could you kindly leave? I would ask how would you know that, but then again, I forgot you're you're a part of the board. For your sake, Rufus, that wasn't a thinly veiled threat. Oh, Machius, you poor fool, you. You don't even know who he is. Well, if I recall, Alyssa, she told you to stay away from them. I can't imagine why after that. I really couldn't. Do you think he's really gonna answer to you? You're just a bunch of students. Tensions, Elliot. Tensions. In that giant thing, yes, yes she does. Man, I 
can't believe your family has the top two floors of a world-class high-rise all to itself. It's the Rhineford building, Crow. It's where everything happens. Why wouldn't it? I'm just saying. Yeah, even high-ranking nobles would trip over themselves to secure a luxury suite like this. I was afraid you guys would react exactly like you just did. That's why I just kept my mouth shut. Sure, it's large, but it's so pointlessly large for just two people. And the only servant we have is Sharon. If you have Sharon, that's the only maid you need. Even for a place this big. Exactly. With what that maid can do. <laughs> you said it. Well, we'll be guests here for the next three days. So, thanks for having us, Elisa. Well, of course. Don't mention it. My, my, my. Is it just me, or do I detect more than a hint of red on Lady Elisa's fair visage? Crow, shut up. Could she be embarrassed? Be. Oh, God damn it, you too. Oh, I am not. <laughs> We're here on a field study, so could we at least try to take this a little more seriously? Ah, yes, much like you did in Brea Hard. Up, Machias. It just wouldn't be a proper field study without one of us getting embarrassed about our family. Because he was just the pinnacle of gentlemanly behavior Welcome there. Home, Hello, Sharon. Feels nice to be back. I'll just ignore how you popped up to greet us the moment we walked through the door. <laughs> Next thing you know, she'll be telling you there are cameras in the elevator, my lady. That's how I knew. <laughs> I just couldn't wait to see you. Uh-huh. Now, if you'll just follow me, I'll show you inside. You scare me sometimes, Sharon. Be nice to have a nice luxurious house. Oh. Well, I'm impressed. This is even more grandiose than I'd expected. You can see the whole town out there below. Talk about the lap of luxury. Looks like a comfy place to take a nap. <laughs> of course you'd say that. You guys really think so? Alyssa, compared to how some people live, yes. I've been away from Ruwer for half a year, so I guess it does feel kind of nice to be home. <laughs> I guess that's natural. I've already finished preparing dinner. Please. Let me know whenever you're ready to eat. Thank you. I don't know about all of you, but I'm pretty hungry. What do you say we... Oh, wait, actually we can't, can we? Mother said she'd be eating with us tonight, so we need to wait until she comes home. And there are quite a few things we need to ask her, too. Well, actually, my lady... Uh-huh, I knew it! expected that to come and happen.
Lisa, if you wolf down so much food so quickly... You'll get fat. Really, Fee? Ah. It's just this once. I eat a balanced diet the rest of the time. But you've been bolting down every course so quickly, I'm surprised you haven't inhaled your napkin. Maybe we're gonna need to rethink your stage outfit for the concert. Crap. I almost forgot about that. If you're worrying about us, you don't need to, you know? I know your mother promised she'd have dinner with us, but we all know she's a busy woman. And she said she'd try to make some time for us tomorrow instead. But still... It's not that it bothers me so much, but she sits on Thor's board of directors. Your point, Who's she what? meeting with that's so important she can't even clear a little time to see us? She got off the Lusitania already, didn't she? I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to say. She's not out on a date with a gentleman or engaging in any lascivious behavior, if that puts your mind at ease. I don't think anyone would have expected her to do any of that if you want the honest truth, Sharon. Ugh, that's not what I'm worried about. Not even close. Honestly? Hearing she was seeing a man might even put my mind at ease. It means she actually has a life outside of her work. Alisa? Why are you looking at him specifically? I mean, really, Alyssa. So essentially, we're just talking with everybody. No, she's not meeting with Rufus. We don't know what uh, her mother is necessarily doing. But we can only assume it's got something to do with what happened outside with Rufus and Claire. Because tensions are just going even higher up. My only assumption is with why the RMP is here is that they think that somehow, in some capacity, that Irina Reinford is somehow providing materials to the Noble Faction or to the Imperial Liberation Front. And I guess they're there to kind of find that out and, if possible, put a stop to it. That's my assumption. Because nothing else quite makes sense to me. Unless there's something else that they're not telling us, but I frankly think it's a matter of, oh, well, um, we're, you know, just making sure that they're not traitors or anything. Pro. I hate to tell you this, but there is a flower pot behind you. I could pick that up and I could very well smash your head in with it. I'm just saying.
I promise there is a reason why I like him and this is not it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Crow, I love you, but my god. It's not prudish, Crow, it's called decency. By polish, I hope you mean more clothes. If I didn't know any better, I swear to God, Selby, you and Crow would get along just fine. Sharon, stop! No! Bad! Bookworm. Especially since he was the head of the company, I would assume he would have to do it in order to stay ahead of the times. The last badge is over here. Knock knock, bitch! Alyssa, you invited him into your room knowing that's exactly what would happen. That's what anyone would do when they immediately go into someone else's bedroom. somehow leave it a little funny. Alright, so we've just about examined everything. What else is there exactly to take a look at, Reed? of room. What would she know? Thank you, Sharon. Well, 
Sharon, it's not like it's exactly hard to take a guess at that. Sharon, I mean, really, it wasn't that hard to guess. I'd rather not, thank you, though. <laughs> Fucking hell. If Devil were here, he would be loving every freaking second of this. He really would. And everybody leave their rooms to go to other places, right? Very, 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 very nosy there, Reen. Oh, it's you. Sorry, were you worried? A little, yeah. Seeing you like that just kind of reminded me of that night in Nord. Oh, right. Oh, I'm so pathetic. I keep going on about how I'm going to be independent. But then I get all worked up over something as trivial as this. Well, I mean, to be fair, she is your mother. Seeing the city from above at night is really something, though. And to think, you got to take in a beautiful view like this every night growing up. Yeah, I guess so. It used to be my grandfather, my father, and my mother here. Then after my father died, Sharon joined us. But... Through the years, my family has always enjoyed seeing the lighted windows of Ruhr at night. Something that never changed, huh? I guess it is to you what Ymir's mountains are to me. <laughs> Maybe every family has something like that. No, not every. Still, first my grandfather left, and now Sharon and I aren't here most of the time either. Mother just stays here all on her own. Every time I think of that, I just feel like crying. It breaks my heart. I can't understand why she chooses to be so alone. I thought so. You're not just angry at her then. <sighs> well, she gets under my skin, that's nothing new. But if I was in her place, I don't know how I'd cope. I couldn't live like she does, losing herself in her work all alone with no friends or loved ones by her side. She wasn't like that before, back when my dad was still alive. She's always been a career woman, but back then she was kind, funny. She had this warmth, you know? But ever since dad passed away, she hasn't been the same. Work became her life. She pushed grandfather out as chairman, all for what? More work? I've never seen her indulge herself, not even once. If she isn't dining with some business partner, she eats nutrition bars instead of meals. Sharon scolds her for it, but... That's how she is. And that's why I'm scared. I don't want life to just pass her by. I couldn't do that, to be honest. I don't know how anyone could. That's really sweet, Elisa. 
<sighs> Rain, you can't go patting every girl you've seen saying that. That's gonna lead to the wrong conclusion. Where did that come from? You're always looking out for the people in your life. Even when they get on your nerves, you still care about them. It's like how you and I were at first, or how you were with Laura and Fee. Heck, I still remember how you told me off for hurting my sister's feelings. You've been keeping an eye out for Milliam all this time, too. And you should know that we're all really grateful to you for it. Especially me. <sighs> I'm worried about what's happening here in Ruwer, too. This is your home, and your mother might be caught up in whatever's going on. I think we should look into it. What do you say? What? But with all our field study tasks, where would we find the time? Why not do it while we're out handling those? Making some headway is always better than making none, right? I mean, I'm not the only one who feels this way. Everyone else does too. Yes, we're all so nosy to know exactly what your mother is doing. Fee cares. So does Elliot. Machias does too. Even Crow's been concerned about you. We can use our time in the city to poke around and find out more about what's going on. You know, kind of like we always do. Well... If you say so, but I'll save the thanks for later. Hmm. I doubt Sharon will tell us anything, no matter how much we pet. But I'll ask around Oops. and see if anyone I know has any idea what might be going on. It shouldn't be too late to give some of them a call at least. All right, I'll leave the info gathering to you. Once we get our task list tomorrow, we can discuss how we want to do this. All right. Anyway, I think I'm going to start calling my contacts. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. If I were you, I wouldn't go around stroking girls' heads like that. I mean, you don't just go whispering sweet nothings into any girl's ear, do you? This isn't so different, really. Huh? Uh, oh, I guess you're right. <sighs> this guy is dense. Sorry, it's something I always did to my sister when she was feeling down. But now that you mention it, she did seem to resent it more as she got older. But when I stopped doing it, she called me insensitive and got all upset anyway. I think your sister and I would have a lot to talk about. I think you should be concerned that his sister even has those kind of feelings. But anyway, I'll see you later. All right. Well, she seems like she's feeling better now. I just hope our efforts will turn up some good leads. Uh-oh. Huh? Call functionality works here? I guess it would, seeing as we're right in the headquarters of the company that built these. Maybe it's the instructor. Hello. Reen Schwarzer speaking. Oh, good. It went through. Glad I was able to get your number from Milliam. Claire? Is this Captain Claire? It is. I apologize for calling so late. Are you free right now? Yeah. What's up? There's something important I'd like to discuss with you. But it's a matter best discussed in person. Would it be possible for you to meet me in the city? Sooner is preferable. Like, right now? No, tomorrow. Um, would this happen to be related to our field study? Technically speaking, yes. But with the provincial army on alert, traveling in a large group would draw too much suspicion. That's why I decided to contact you directly. You are the team leader. People keep saying that, but I never recall agreeing to it. <laughs> 
Hey, cause you fit into the role without needing to be asked, Reen. But, sure, I guess. I'll head out right now. Where should I meet you? Go to the upper level. On the south side of the elevated walkway, you'll see a bar called F. It's a quiet, upscale establishment. The perfect place for a private discussion. A bar called F on the south side of the upper level. Got it. I'll head there right away. I'll be waiting. I'm not on a schedule or anything, though, so there's no need to rush. You've got time. And, by the way, I'd rather you didn't mention any of this to Elisa. Huh? Why? Because what I want to discuss with you happens to involve the Reinford Company. Uh, of course it does. I'll leave it to your discretion. Anyway, you know where to find me. It feels a bit cruel to keep only Elisa out of the loop. No shit, especially if you deign to tell all the other class members, and then proceed to say, don't say this to Alyssa. But it sounds like it's pretty important. I think it'd be better to go now and tell everyone else about it later. And exactly how are you going to explain this to the scary maid? Oh, I got a date outside the city. I'll be back in like an hour. Fucking me teleports! <laughs> There's no need to explain. That glimmer in your eyes tells me all I need to know. Sharon, you scare me. Not to worry, Master Reen. Your secret's safe with me. So enjoy your night to the fullest. This maid scares me. Wait, what? <laughs> you have a date with a fetching young lady, don't you? I wouldn't exactly call it a date, per se. I'm not sure no one notices your absence, especially my lady. Just be certain you're back by morning. Oh, good grief. I assure I mean, you, why are I'm we... not that lucky. <sighs> I just got word that this acquaintance of mine was visiting Ruin. Real smooth and rain. they wanted to catch up a bit, so I was going to slip out and see them for a little while. <laughs> Very well, then. I'll lock up behind you. I'd also be glad to help you build an ironclad alibi. No one would think twice, even if you were to stay out all night. Um... That's not exactly true, Sharon, because I'm pretty damn sure Alyssa would think twice. I appreciate the thought, but I don't think that'll be necessary. Anyway, I'll be back later. Of course. Take care. Thank you, thank you! A hot, mysterious date in the city. Oh, yes. I can't imagine Alyssa would be very happy to see that. It's past nine already, but I still see quite a few people working. It's probably open 24-7, Reen. I guess it comes with the territory. Working for the world's largest industrial manufacturer. What the fuck was that? What was that? That's what I just said. Of course. Hello, Fee. Whoops. Yeah, you didn't do a very good job of hiding. I thought so. Hey, why are you running away? <laughs> Fee, you do realize that was the worst kind of hiding job you could I'm have possibly you done, right? Me. I was trying pretty hard to be stealthy. If that's your hardest, I'm afraid to see what's your easiest. <sighs> How long were you hiding there? Wait, have you been trailing me ever since I left the penthouse? How the fuck could she tell you all the way downstairs without you knowing? 
There was only one elevator, wasn't there? Well, I saw you slip out. So, where are you going? Are you really headed out for a late night romantic rendezvous? Oi! No! Fee, it's not. Oh, yeah. What kinds of lies has Sharon been feeding you anyway? I don't think you need Sharon to feed that. I'm just saying, you've okay. got that kind of personality. Here's what's up the dense one that it just somehow attracts all the ladies. That totally sounds like a rendezvous. Sorry, I shouldn't have interfered. Whoa, 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 Fee, it's not what you think. Whoa, whoa, it's not like that. <sighs> well, you know everything I know about it now. Why don't you come too? You sure? Well, that way, unless I can't quite say I went to meet another woman when I brought a woman with me. No reason not to. It sounded like whatever info she's got has something to do with our field study. And honestly, I wasn't all that keen on having a one-on-one -on -one with a military officer to begin with. Gotcha. But first, I want to walk around a bit. After we've been walking around all day? Whenever I come to a new city, I always like to get a feel for what it's like during the day and the night. I feel kind of uneasy if I don't. Oh, right. It must be a Jaeger thing. All right. I'll join you for a little stroll. I don't want to keep the captain waiting too long, though. Will once around town be enough? That'll be fine. Okay, let's roll. <sighs> Ow. By the way, did you happen to run into Sharon on your way out? She saw me leaving, but she just let me go. Hmm. Even the best maids aren't that all-knowing. Yeah, I think there's more to it than her just being a maid. This is where Claire saying. said to meet her, right? Yeah, this looks like the place. Let's get this show rolling! Oh, this looks like a fancy ass establishment. All right, now to find Kev. Oh, wow. Just in the part of romantic interest, eh, Claire? Uh, I guess it makes sense that she wouldn't come here in uniform. Yeah, this is true. But isn't that a bit too done up? Charms of an older woman, eh? Fee, shut up. I think I'll manage. <laughs> Hello, fancy lady. Sorry I kept you waiting. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Oh. Hi. Yeah, I kind of ran into her on the way here and told her she could come along. That's not a problem, is it? Not at all. I assume you've been surveying the town while acting as Rain's bodyguard. Sounds like you've done your homework. The intelligence division has told me a little. Anyway... I think we might attract a little too much attention if we stay at the counter. What do you say we get a table for three? Sure. It's good to see you both. I think this may be the first time we've been able to have a proper conversation. You may be right. She certainly cleans up nice when she needs to, though. I will give her that. I was hoping I'd get the chance to sit down and talk with you, too, actually. Oh? You sure you don't want me to go? <laughs> Fucking hell! That's not what I mean. I have a lot of questions. Like, about why Milliam transferred into our class, for example. But there's one really fundamental question that would go a long way toward answering a lot of the others. 
What exactly is it that you and Chancellor Osborne are trying to accomplish? Besides giving us a headache. Let's look at that standoff at the Provincial Army earlier this evening. It's hard for me to feel much sympathy for them after they drove armored cars right into the middle of the city. Drop the water bottle. Bye. But maintaining order in the provinces is generally accepted to be the duty of the provincial armies. Maybe it's just me, but it seemed an awful lot like you were just trying to provoke them by belittling their authority. But didn't they start that? It did look like your people were picking a fight. I'm sorry, it looked to me like the provincial army was starting that fight before the RMP started. Viewed without the proper context, I can see how it might look like that. But right now, the factional conflict in the Empire is nearly at its breaking point. Crossbell is buzzing with talk of independence and Calvert is still weathering its immigration disputes. In such volatile times, there's a very real need to create a far more expansive network to help maintain public order. The only organizations that are up to the challenge are the Railway Military Police and the Intelligence Division. That may be the case. Still, your boss is the one making those conflicts worse. I can't deny that. But at the very least, the Chancellor is acting with a sense of integrity. He hasn't stooped so low as to give aid to terrorists, unlike some others I could name. I want you to at least understand that. Wait, so... Wow, she really said it. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, let's look at it this way. The Noble Faction has quite plainly made it obvious that they do not support the counselor. In fact, they hate the counselor and everything he's been doing. Therefore, it would only be logical that they would share the same idealistic ideas as the um, Imperial and Liberation Front, since they also hate the the counselor. Therefore, the goals align. So, my enemy's enemy is my friend. You know that kind of thing. So the noble faction's been the one backing the terrorists, huh? I'm afraid there's no longer any doubting it. We've all but confirmed the involvement of Duke Cayenne, the most prominent representative of the four great houses. Well, he wasn't exactly doing a very good job of hiding that. The three airships the Imperial Liberation Front have been using have been traced back to Ordis as well. Uh-oh. Is Milliam and the others all right? I'd wondered how they got their hands on those. I've heard the Duke is just a gaudy old man, but... Eustace's brother came to pick him up in the Grand, didn't he? That's what Toval told us. And now, Rufus just so happens to pop up on another of his secret trips. Captain Clare, what's going on in Ruhr? And how are Elisa's family and the Reinford Company involved? I guess it's time to get to the matter I called you here for in the first place. The Railway Military Police is currently weighing the possibility of a forced inspection of Reinford's first factory. See what I mean? I told you exactly what I thought it would be. She suspects they are somehow aiding the Noble Faction and or the Imperial Army. Sounds serious. The first factory belongs to one of Reinford's major divisions, right? Correct. It's one of the main divisions and handles the bulk of the company's iron and steel processing, among other things. But could it be possible that stuff is going out and the Reinford family is unaware of it? Unless Alyssa's mother has an idea and that's why she's not there at dinner because she's trying to find that out. They're also currently under suspicion of something I'm not at liberty to discuss with you right now. Like what? The two of you are aware that project management at Reinford is split up across several major branches, right? Yes. Is? And on top of that, she's got her hands in the development of our Arcus units, too. It's way too much work for one person. How many projects does Mother have under her wing right now? Well, I'm afraid I can't give a simple answer to that. But suffice to say, 
The chairman only knows about a small number of the projects in development by the Rhineford Group. When you put it that way, who the fuck are the other project handler heads? Lately, the directors have. Come to think of it, I overheard Elisa and Sharon talking about something like that. Oh, I see what's happening. The other project heads are helping the noble or the imperial. For years now. Reinford has been the Empire's heavyweight when it comes to heavy industry and manufacturing. That's no surprise. The company is split into different divisions that handle things like steel production, railways, weaponry, and tools. The problem is that those divisions have simply become too large. Large enough to have their own internal allegiances. Some to the nobles, with others supporting the reformist faction. Uh, are you serious? So even companies are taking sides. I wouldn't say companies as I would say employees. I'm sure Arena Reinford is aware of this to at least some extent as the company's chairman. But the self-supporting accounting system she introduced has the side effect of granting each division a long leash. Because of that, I doubt even she has a full grasp of the situation. So, the first factory you guys have your sights set on for that inspection? Aligned with the noble faction, I assume. You assume correctly. And the provincial army is doing everything it can to stop us from carrying out that inv- That's what led to this evening's quarrel. I imagine Chairman Arena is currently doing her utmost to rein in all the divisions and get them back in line. The thing is, when she seized control of the company five years ago, she had to rely on support from both sides. Being indebted to them like that I have my doubts she'll be able to target the underlying problem. It's sounding shadier by the minute. You can say that again. The situation seems even more dire than I thought. A lot more dire. And while all this is going on, the factional conflict keeps burning hot across the rest of the Empire. I've told you as much as I can right now. Tensions are mounting all over the country. But Ruhr has an extra fuse of its own. Try to gain an understanding of the crisis unfolding here. Then do your best to stay out of it. Sounds exactly like the opposite of what Irina said to do. Whatever other lessons Class 7 takes away from this field study, I hope that ends up on the list. This is all just a goddamn power play. You cannot tell me otherwise, Claire. <laughs> I wish you the best with the remainder of your field study. Please have the bill sent to the Railway Military Police Branch Office in Ruhr Station. Certainly. Enjoy the rest of your evening. 